All right, all right, here we go, you guys. Hello, hello, welcome to the community first call as I admit people in here. So good to see you on here, Penny. Welcome to our group. So who is this group for? This group is for leaders and coaches that want to create real connection with the client or team members they serve by building community. People like us care more about progress and results than conversion rates. We live by the sticky note. Who can I help today? That's what we care about in here. So if that sounds like you, you are in the right room. Make sure you hop on this call to get the most value out of these calls. It is to click the Zoom link above me right here. So click that Zoom link, jump on the call. Honestly, if you see our, if I see your face, if I see Morgan, if I see Cherry, if I see Cindy, if I see Penny, I know who you are. And if I know who you are, I actually will reach out to you and have a real conversation. So yes, you can watch on the live stream, chime in in the chat if you're just not able to jump on, but to get the real value, to actually connect with Sheila, it's get on these live calls, connect with real humans. <laughs> People in this group end up having lifelong friends, or maybe we meet live, or maybe we end up working together, Morgan and I. You never know where these relationships can go. Some people end up being with finding clients in this community. But honestly, that doesn't happen if you're not in the conversation. So hop on if you're considering it. We'll have a fun hour packed for you guys today. My name is Jamie Peth. I do this every single week because it's my mission to connect leaders with other leaders so that together we can create experiences and communities that change lives. I help people build their first online community and I also freelance as a facilitator for teams that are looking to align their company with their goals. Today, I'm really excited to turn the tables and let one of our awesome community members lead this call, Miss Morgan Ekovich. She's also my lead coach. So her and I, actually the story behind Morgan and I is she was a client of mine and she was the client of mine that implemented everything so fast. <laughs> she got it done and she did it exceptionally well and then she improved the entire process. And so you know what? I was like, Morgan, I think you need to teach this. Do you want to help lead some of these experiences? And she stepped into that coaching role. She stood out as, as a client by coaching just on her own. And really, it was just a natural fit for the two of us to start working together. What's beautiful about Morgan is she brings a completely different perspective and a per completely different skill set to what I do. And you're going to see today, <laughs> what she's teaching is not something that I am good at. It's not natural for me. And she's helped me ele elevate my skill set and manage my time better. And I'm really excited to have her share that experience with you. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Morgan Ekovich, and we're going to dive into today's training. Hello, everyone. Um, Jamie, I think that's the first time you've done Miss Morgan Ekovich. You've done my full name with a miss. I was like, whoa, I was thrown Did off. Like it? it? Did you not like it? Like, where are we know. at with the miss? <laughs> I don't know. It's different. I enjoyed it, I think. Um, so as Jamie said, yes, we work together. And actually what I'm teaching you guys today is something that I've implemented with Jamie in the last month. And she's going to share how helpful it's been for her. In addition to what she's already trying to do for herself to help manage our time. But before we get into our training, I, we like to go around the room, know who's in the room. So I wanted us to share who we are, where we are from. And then my question is, where in your day do you see yourself coming up against, I don't have enough time or I have too much to do? So where does that usually fall in your day? Is it right in the morning? Is it at with work, family? Kind of give me some insight into where that shows up for you. And who would like to go first and then we'll just go then i'll click around the horn sheila do you want to go first sure sure so my name is sheila urban and i have to wear my sunglasses because i got readers in them and i'm an old lady and i can't see you guys so i'm sheila urban i'm an entrepreneur and i do all kinds of crazy things with horses and then um i have trouble. Oh, I'm from Dodge City, Kansas, and I have trouble managing my day 
because I'm stuck in the trees. I can't see the forest. So, but just so you all know today, I am kicking it, okay? Two big accounts build out because I wear all the hats. So whether it be bookkeeping, uh, what, you know, uh, advertising, all those hats I just wear. We're extremely windy in Kansas, so I don't know how my connection is going to be out here in the barn. But just so you know, I'm stoked to be here because I love time management. I just wish I could master it. Awesome. And I got one more question for you. Is there a certain part in your day where you come across the feeling of like, I'm overwhelmed, I can't do it all? Is there a certain part in your day or kind of when does that show up? Well, I know that affects my sleeping at night. <laughs> I should have stayed up late and did this. Um, but it, you know, Morgan, it kind of varies because if I have no classes during the day, which the four days of the week I do classes, two of those days I have classes anywhere from 11 a.m. on um, in the next days, like today, and it's 1.30 on. So then I'm out in the barn until eight or nine at night. I'm lucky if I go in and have a sandwich and go to bed. So as far as being productive, the lessons keep me going from four o'clock on because we're busy. But, you know, in the morning, I either have a choice. I can work on book work and billings and statements and things like that. Or I could go out to the barn an hour early before lessons start and get my personal horses rode. That's what I battle. Okay. I use seven to eight in the morning to feed my horses, spend time with my husband, and I've been working out during that time. So I love I'm trying. It. I love it. And I love hearing where that struggle is, that balance between you working your horses or you doing stuff for your business. And being able to manage our time in a good way allows us to not have to kind of fret over which one is the better option. We are going to be able yes. to create clear boundaries in the long run of I can have work and life balance and love it all. Well, quit lying to me, Morgan. Stop. <laughs> Penny, would you like to go next? You are muted, just so you know. <laughs> Okay. Now, okay? You are all perfect. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Penny McKinnis from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, I'm, I'm not a coach or anything like that, but I have a children's art school with like about, I used to do all the teaching of painting. My husband used to do all the carving, teaching soapstone carving. And now it gr is growing so big. I was, after I taught for 35 years and retired, um, I had a brainwave at 60. Oh, I want to open my children's art school just as a side gig. And it's grown to 234 students and now seven part-time teachers. And I don't even teach art anymore except coming up with the projects. I do teach reading, writing, math to a group once a week. Um, but so that it's pretty crazy. It's a full-time job. I am like the lady said, wearing all the hats. That's me as well. I do have an accountant, but I'm trying to do it all and trying to learn about how to do like our school is doing well. We're almost full um, all, most of the time, but I started my daughter-in-law up four minutes away competition for me <laughs> in my own area. But um, so I, I gave her 55 students and I'm drawing. So I'm trying to fill both schools. So I'm doing all that. But plus I've got a book that's being launched right now and they're going to give me an hour long coaching call and marketing and everything, but I know I need more than that. And the reason the Christmas tree is here, the second book I've got, the editing has been done. It's going into, it'll be going into publication too, but I still need a few more pictures and advertising. So the trees are still up. I'm not, I feel I'm so far behind. I'm, I'm first. <laughs> so, um, and, and a number of other things. I'm taking a course on becoming affiliate marketing. I want to teach my art classes online to go with art kits. Um, so a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I use my time pretty productively, but once the kids come, like the teachers come at 3.30 and then I have to get kids in and 
you know, that I don't teach, but so I can still be doing things at that time. But every time a parent person calls to ask me about my art school, that can be easy 20, 25 minutes. And then they come to view the studio. That's another 20, 25 minutes. So all of that as well. So I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed about everything. Like just, ah, oh. I need to, I am hiring some help though, getting some help with some of this. Well, thank you for being here and sharing what you were doing when, uh, so you just started that recently within how many years did you start? this? Well, I've been, um, well, I started the school down in my basement while I was still teaching for three years and I'm, I'm 17 now. So the art school has been going on for 13 years. So, wow. yeah, and it was supposed to be a so side awesome. retirement gig. I had no idea, but it's, it's, it's the best ever. We love it. So. Good. Well, I am happy to have you here. Cherry, how about you? What's going on with you? Who are you? Where are you from? And where do you feel overwhelmed? You don't have enough time. You have too much to do. I'm Cherry from Springfield, Missouri. I'm a mom of nine and I help other moms pause. <sighs> and connect to God herself and her kids. Overwhelmed. The most overwhelmed is probably when I have six different kids asking me for different things and they all want me at the same time. And then my husband asks me or calls me and then someone else is messaging me and I'm like, ah, I can't do this. It's too many things at once. Probably afternoon-ish. Okay, so kind of in the app, your mornings run pretty smooth, but your afternoons are where you start to get bogged down by some things. I think so. And then at the at, at night, like when we're trying to wrap up the day, you still have the sink full of everything and the mess from dinner and this and that. And oh, we didn't give him a bath yet. And the list goes on. So at night too, like when I'm wrapping up my day. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Cindy, how about you? Who are you? Where are you from? And where in your day do you see yourself saying, I don't have enough time. I have too much to do. I am Cindy. I live in Atlanta, but I'm from New York. I feel it's very important to put in because I'm not a Southerner. Um, I, um, you know, listen, at the end of the day, I feel like it ebbs and flows, right? So there's days where I, I don't have enough time. And then there's other days where I'm like, you know, have all the time in the world. So, I mean, it's hard for me because I still have my marketing agency that I'm running while I'm still trying to build up this Facebook group that is taking up so much of my time. So I'm trying to like juggle it all without dropping any balls while being a mom and, you know, doing everything else that goes with it. And struggling sometimes because I have this disease, which is makes things difficult. So I, uh, you know, I'm just like trying to do it all at once. And, and so there's good day, there's days it's like this, it's just, you know, I, so I don't really have, I do notice that I it, don't turn my brain off ever at night. So, um, that is one time that I'm constantly going, I sleep with a notepad next to my bed, which is some of the best advice I've ever been told in my life. And I've always done it because I think, you know, you'll forget if you don't. And so, um, nighttime, it's not that I'm overwhelmed, but I feel like that's where I get a lot of my good thoughts, good thinking. I love that you mentioned the notebook. I actually had a client and she was like, I just can't decompress at the end of the night. I just have too much running. I said, type it out on your phone, voice memo it, or write down in a notebook, everything. Yep. Cause our brain likes when we get things out of it, yep. we don't just hold it all in. Yeah. It's the best advice I swear that I was given like five years ago or a long time ago. And I've, it's, it's never left. So. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Jamie, how about you? I know you kind of did your intro a little bit, but I want to know the last question. Where do you see yourself not having enough time? Well, I'm definitely stealing that idea from Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing that immediately. And my big issue is sleep. Like, where do I see myself not having enough time? I think... I'm an Enneagram seven. I want to do all the things at the same time yesterday. <laughs> so it's a constant, constant battle for me. And I don't know if I could just pinpoint one moment in the day. It's a, it's literally a, like it's spinning in my head. So Cindy, I'm doing, I'm doing it tonight. I'm starting this right now. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question. I also want to share that Cheryl in the chat 
changing, she's trying to change her word from busy to productive. It's helped her feel more calm. And, and Tanya is struggling with finding time for herself. Or I think we all can probably echo that as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, knowing where you guys are is a really good chance for us to see where are those struggles? Is it at the end of the day when we're having trouble decompressing? Is it in the middle when we're getting these random phone calls? And today I'm going to show you, uh, we're actually going to do an exercise. We're all going to go through it and then you will have an opportunity to have an accountability partner for the next couple of weeks if you enjoy it, which I will explain as we go. But um, as far as I can remember, I've always been in control of my schedule. I've never really had issues with time management. Um, I never... I, I've always had a planner. If you do not have a planner, please get yourself a planner or a calendar. It will save your life. Um, but I've always known what was coming. I guess where my biggest struggle came was prioritizing what was the most important in the day and actually sticking to that. So I would say I have my list every morning that I create and I'll bounce around. And when I know I bounce around, I'm not as productive and I get that overwhelm, that anxious feeling of, I didn't do enough today. I didn't do the thing that needed to be done. So finding those priorities and saying them out loud and sticking to those priorities is where it comes in of finding what is best and what you're actually going to move forward on to get you feeling relief and feeling like you're moving forward. So example for Cherry would be at the end of the night, you have a kid that hasn't had a bath, the dishes aren't done, and the laundry hasn't been switched, as well as a bunch of other things on the list. Pick one or two things that actually have to be done by the end of the night because some because things can be left till the morning. Clothes will probably get stinky. Dishes will be fine. Depending on how long the kid has had, it, you, he may need it or not. So when we think about priorities, we think about priorities for personal and professional because if we do not think about both, you're either going to do everything for yourself or you're going to do everything for your business. And if you don't create clear boundaries and priorities for both of them, your work-life balance is not going to be there. And the time management is just not going to be balanced. So about three weeks ago now, I believe, I think this was week four, um, I started implementing something with Jamie. I essentially became her accountability coach. So I, I jumped into our team call, which she, it's her company. I jumped in and I led our team call though, right off the bat. Uh, I was like, okay, this is what we're doing today. And we created, what are your three things that need to be accomplished this week? And not just in a day, but looking, what are the three main things? And one of them was finish module four, create a training for a company. And there was something else, oh, and schedule out some trainings so that she could get some content planning. Next, we looked into what day could she do these? Because the real thing is we pick our priorities, but if you don't have time to actually do them or you pick, oh, I'll do it today, but you know your day's swamped, it's not realistic. So we picked the, her three priorities. We picked the day she was gonna do it. And then the following week, we got to check in with each other. Hey, how did those go? Did you actually do those? Nope, I skipped the deadline. So we got to check in with each other to make sure that those big things, those things that actually matter, Getting your searchy videos tagged is low on the totem pole compared to getting a training like this complete. So we also have to think what is more important and it's okay if those little things slip and get pushed the next day. I promise, I push things to the next day. Not, we can't do everything all at once. So I'm gonna have Jamie share what her experience has been about, about four weeks that we've been checking in with each other and holding each other accountable on a team aspect, and then just kind of for you personally and professionally. Absolutely. And it's interesting because I consider everyone that comes onto these calls, high achievers, like we are high achievers. We know how to get stuff done. We know how to make movement in our business. I have a full focus planner, which does give you the three things a day. I've always done, like I've done this for a long time. So why did something shift with Morgan? That's the part that's so fascinating to me is she was crushing it. Like she, she just constantly is very good at, at saying no. She's very good at completing the day. And I'm like, why am I not asking you how? <laughs> Cause my list is there. I know my priorities and I'm not as effective as I know I could be at accomplishing those really important needle movers. 
So I asked her, like, can you share your process with me? Like, let's go, like, make me better. Let's do it. <laughs> if you can fix this, you're amazing. So what I found is she was doing this thing with her clients that I didn't even realize she was doing. And it was the accountability piece. And as silly as that sounds, like the accountability of that check-in was reassuring to me to know what she was working on. And it also gave me a little extra edge of, oh, I have to get this done because Morgan's going to ask. I don't want to say no. <laughs> and it really, it changed the game for me. I, honestly, we are so much more productive in what we create for my business because of this system in four weeks. And I'm going to chime in with, I remember after the first week you mentioned it was nice to know what they were and not to have to bumble around with what am I going to do next? You knew those three had to be completed because we get stuck in that long list of, Hmm, what's the next thing I should do? And we just, we do that. We're not sure what the next best thing to do. So having those priorities isn't easy. Nope. The module four has got to be recorded. It needs to get done. I need to set the time apart and the accountability with my clients and incorporating it in this aspect is how I took my, is how I take my people and Jamie from knowing we all have the same 24 hours in the day. Literally, we all have the same 24 and that you can see somebody who has clear boundaries. They're done by five. They, they don't work after the evening. Like, and then you see people who are working till midnight, don't sleep at all. And their businesses could be making the same amount of revenue. So how do you prioritize and make sure that you're, you're falling into the group that has some boundaries and some flexibility in life? And honestly, a lot of it is it's life management, not just time management. You're managing your life. You're not just managing one portion of time. And it's not something you can flip on and flip off when you need it. It's got to be a system that is simple, consistent, that you can consistently do and that will become a habit for you. And being able to create something for yourself and to use the things that I'm gonna teach you, but make it your own. We talk about like, I can create this perfect system, but if you don't like it, you're not gonna use it. So use it in a way like, oh, I need four things instead of three. I need one thing instead of three. Make it your own so you'll actually do it. And that's where I find people stray away is we always look for the next best thing and we don't have consistency. So let's start simple. We're going to go through an exercise that we're all going to go through together. We're going to do it all. And then we're going to make it consistent. So there, we're going to have check-ins and then to make sure that it's a habit, you're going to make sure we put on our calendar when things are actually going to happen. Cause if they're not on the calendar, they don't happen. In my opinion, we can be thinking about them all over here. But until it's physically in front of us, like Cindy said, having that notebook at the end of the night for all those ideas, we're going to forget about them. So before we get into the activity, what's sitting with you guys? What's coming up? What are you excited for? Not excited for? Kind of give me some insights on where you're at. Cherry? Simple. I like simple. And I love how you said time management is really life management. Awesome. I love it. Any, Sheila? I am tickled pink about learning how to set priorities. I struggle real hard with, you know, all the legs of my, you know, businesses. And then to put life on top of that too. My daily, you know, Sheila or or uh, time with the hubby. I mean, you know, be grandma. So I'm very, very excited about this. Perfect. Anybody else? What's coming up for you? What are you excited for? What are you just kind of here for? Well, one thing that, oh, am I muted? Nope, you're good. I can hear you, Penny. Oh, now you're muted. Sorry. No, yeah, you're good. <laughs> Um, uh, one of the things I had, I used to belong to a gym, but I hate driving in the winter in Edmonton, 
icy roads. I just hate the driving. I love living in Edmonton, but I hate our winters. But um, so I put my health club membership on hold for three months, but I doing my personal training um, two times a week, just half an hour a time. But now, so that's been great. At least I've been doing that much intention. I'm going to exercise every day. It's not happening, but two times a week, but I start up again in a, in a, I think it's April 11th or the 15th. And so I'll be going to the gym again. And I find that really, really important just for, you know, my mindset sort of thing. Um, I, I go to bed quite early at night because I find in the evening, I just sent it, end up maybe watching TV with my husband, which is fine. That's all part of it. But I don't need to do that every night because our students usually end up leaving around 730. And by the time the instructors leave, it's eight o'clock. I'm usually in bed, but I'm up at four in the morning. So I get a lot done in the morning, that's a great time for me, but I don't feel like doing any house, all the stuff I need to do around the house. So I do my business, some stuff to do with my book, um, all of that. Um, but I've got some things like cleaning my basement, like stuff that it really needs to be done and grandma time too with my, I've got three grandchildren here in Edmonton and just making sure I spend time with, with them and the family. So trying to include that in but it is really important I try and do lunch with a girlfriends at least twice a month that's about it that my other girlfriends are all lunching and going out for suppers and everything and I don't have time to be a part of that but um and some one girlfriend comes with me when I run around and do chores around the city and we get our visit time in that way pretty pathetic on my part as a friend but not at all it's the time together that matters whether you're yeah sitting there on the phone, not talking, both watching Netflix or you're out running errands or you're out to dinner. The yeah. fact that you are making time just to be with one another, that's the important part. Yeah, uh, that's important. So it's so easy to say, oh, I don't have time. And I do that too often as well, but I'm trying to get better about that. I love that. And I'm gonna bring up the, um, I don't have time after we hear from Cindy. No, I was just going to say, Morgan, that I think, you know, for me, I'm really, really good at like scheduling vacations. Like I'm a huge vacation person. Like I tr traveling is like my, I love it. So I'm really good at trap, like scheduling that out and saying like, listen, I'm gone for three weeks because we're going to Africa or I'm going to Europe or wherever. I'm really good at that. I'm not good at the day to day though. See what I mean? Like, so I can be like, okay, I'm going to Africa for three weeks, turning everything off. Peace out. Okay. Don't leave me alone. But when it comes to like day to day, like even on the weekends, like at my son's football games, answering emails, like, you know what I mean? So I think that there is, it's kind of weird because like, I understand the importance of it. Maybe it's because I'm in a different country or you're sort of like, I don't know, but it's just, I'm really good at like the vacation part of it, but not so good at like the day-to-day -day sort of vacation relaxation sort of part of it, if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. I feel like Jamie can relate to that one. Um, <laughs> Jamie, do you got anything or are you feeling, tell me what's on your mind. Honestly, I just, I really get a lot of value out of listening to what everyone else is struggling with. Cause I, there's so many commonalities about everything that we're all going through. The girlfriend one hit me the most probably though. Like I have sacrificed so much time with my friends because I put, you know, I, my, my significant other comes first. I've got family and then I've got my business and my business takes so much out of like, I love my business. I, I didn't want to work on it all the time. It's hard to turn it off because I love it. Um, yeah. So I think the friends piece though, that that's coming up a lot. I want to make more time for the people that matter most in life. Cause you're right. That's what matters most is the connection with our people. So I'm actually going to kind of switch the way I was going to do this training because it sounds like what's coming up is a lot of the personal priorities is like when it comes to work priorities, you guys feel pretty, you feel pretty confident in what needs to be done work-wise. Does that sound right? But you guys are struggling to put in the personal side. And if that's not what, if anybody put an X on the screen, if that's not what I'm hearing. <laughs> okay. 
So we're gonna still do the same exercise, but we're gonna really just focus on the personal part. So I have my whiteboard here. My whiteboard's a little bit smaller than Jamie's for any of you guys have seen Jamie's. Mine I can actually hold in my hand. Um, I want you guys to write the week of April 6th through 12th. So up here at the top of your piece of paper, right? So this would be from this Wednesday to next Tuesday. And then you're gonna write personal. We're gonna ignore the part one and we're gonna do part two here. And part two is personal. And I didn't put priority, but put personal priorities. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick three things. I want you guys to all think about what are three things that you would love to do for yourself, for your family, for a friend, with a friend from now until next Tuesday. And if you're, so write three things down that you would really like to do and make it like, if you know you have a busy weekend, don't say weekend retreat with the girls. Like be realistic in what is actually you wanna do, what you think you can actually accomplish. And then once you've wrote your three things, just kind of look up at me to let me know that you've completed those. And those who are watching on Facebook right now or watching the replay, do the same thing. Drop it in the chat, your three um, priorities, your personal priorities that you'd like to achieve in this next week. I feel like Penny's looking at her calendar right now to see if she's got time. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's and that's April and April's only started and that's my day timer. I'm, I'm so not into technology, doing stuff on my phone. My biggest thing is um, my pens that have an erasable pens so I can race and that that's my big technology find. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I, I use being 70, I have an excuse to do some old school stuff like that. Well, that erasable pens isn't old school to me. That's new stuff. I'm just looking, I, I've got, oh God, I've got one of these. Okay, so the sixth. Go ahead, don't wait for me, I'm fine. Oh, nope, you're good. I see Cherry's still working too. Um, as you guys are doing it, I'm gonna go over what mine are because I did do this and I do this every single week. And it's something that I find is super helpful for me to remember that it is important to put that family time in there. It is important to do things for ourselves. Um, so mine are more for me and it is read or listen to a book. I am really struggling with that. That is a goal, but I know that it is important to me and I want to make sure that I'm putting the time aside because it is good self help, self personal growth, all of that. So my personal priority is to read or listen to a book, get my three workouts in. Like if I don't get those in and I don't prioritize those, my life doesn't run as well. Another one is book a massage. I am due for my massage. That, that is something that needs to happen. Some other ones, those were when I was oh, talking about, I was going more personal. If I were to do friend stuff, I want to go to a sporting event would be one thing. We're actually getting to do that on Saturday for the first time in a while. And then we're going to go through all of you guys. What were your three personal priorities that you wrote down? And then as I go through each of you, we're going to actually put them on the calendar, which means if you make that you want to get together with a friend on Sunday, that means today you're giving them a call. You're going to take the action to actually move forward and do the thing to make sure that it happens. And if they say no, when you are on the phone with them, schedule a time in the next week. My friends and I, when we get together, we don't leave until we've scheduled our next time together because that's just what life looks like. So, Cindy, would you like to go first? What were your three that you wrote down? Yeah, so I actually had to block off my day tomorrow because you know, you with those calendar things, those like, if you don't, then you'll get scheduled for the whole thing because my we're on spring break and my daughter's like, you're spending zero time with us because we didn't go anywhere because we just went somewhere for February break. So I blocked out the day tomorrow and me and my daughter are going to go shopping the whole day, shopping out to lunch and out to dinner. 
So that's definitely some a personal priority. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be just a mommy and Lily dive. Super excited about it. And then um, I reconnected actually with a girl um, who I haven't spoken to in forever through a person on my Facebook group. It's just so weird how things happen. He needed a connection with someone in the underwater world, in this, the ocean world. I know someone who's very well known in the ocean world. Connect to the two. And now we're trying to, we're going to lunch this week. So I need to make sure that that really happens because I schedule these lunches and then they don't happen. And then I was supposed to go to dinner this past week with my girlfriend, Megan. I had a bad week, just physically wasn't feeling great. So I canceled it. And so I've got to get that back on the schedule because otherwise I won't see her for another four or five months. So those are my three things. Perfect. So one was the lunch and one was the dinner. Do you have, actually, I'm not going to ask, do you have time? At what point today are you going to call them or message them and make sure that you get a time set up? So Aaron and I have already been, um, the lunch, Aaron and I have been emailing all day trying to figure out a time. Megan is on spring break. So we already talked and we said, we're going to talk about it when she gets back Sunday. So that will happen Sunday. So. Perfect. And I am going to rewatch this because I'm not taking notes right now because I want to be here with you guys, but I am going to follow up with you. Did you get that lunch scheduled with Megan? I'm going to follow up. Or did you actually go to lunch with your friend um, for the underwater? Like, I'm going to follow up with you guys. This is the point you get to see what having somebody hold you accountable for your personal stuff looks like. Yeah. So that it's not work, but it's like, oh, I got to do this. And she, I got to tell her about it. Right. No, nope, it's great. That's great. We need to be held accountable. Sheila, how about you? What were your three personal things? Okay, my three personal things is one is I want to continue working out. You know, when you start a new exercise program, they go, you know, work out a day, take a rest day, work out a day just so your muscles don't get fatigued. That doesn't work well for me because once I take that day off, I'm done. Just mm -hmm. saying. So I am going to continue to do my little mini exercise. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to incorporate, like I did this yesterday morning, the yoga meditation. I want to put that at the beginning of my workout because I either put it at the beginning or the end, whichever it doesn't, doesn't really matter to me, but so that I can be focused through my day, you know? And the third thing is family time. I get my coffee with my husband every day and I learn about flying pigeons and that's fine. That's his deal. He has to hear about my horses. Um, but, you know, my, uh, my grandson just lives a hop, skip and a jump from me. And I need to have a Grammy day with him. He's six. So either that or his whole family, or maybe we'll go out to eat lunch or something. I need to figure that out. So dates by the end of the day by the end of the day you're going to have what a schedule for my family time with my daughter and her son and her, or my son-in-law perfect and for your workouts and meditation do you have those added to your calendar already uh no add those to your calendar and think of them as doctor's appointments that you cannot skip it and if you do, you have to pay the copay anyways. So think about it that way. You don't want to, you want to put it on the calendar and you want to do it. Okay. So yours are to call and set up your time and then get those um, meditation and workouts on the calendar. Yep. Perfect. Jamie, how about you? I have four. Um, of course, <laughs> but I don't think I want four, so I well, need three. Help me figure out which three. Can we do that? <laughs> absolutely. I was going to say, let's start and you'll probably end up weaning it out with some questions anyways. Okay. So my four is a walk with a friend. Number two is fish my face off with no laptop. We actually have a fishing derby this weekend. And it's very hard for me to turn off work. I always bring it on the boat. I bring the dang laptop on the boat. That's a problem. Um, so that, and then work out. I'm doing 75 hard. So I need to work out twice per day. And I want to figure out how to do that while I'm fishing. I got to figure that out somehow. 
um, and then work with my horse. Which, so. Thank you for that, because I see your horse in the background. It's your fault. <laughs> so which one do you think is going to be the most beneficial for you and for you to feel fulfilled? My horse, because I'm neglecting him. So when do you have, so that's for sure one. What's the next thing that's going to make you feel fulfilled and heartful and ready to take on the work week? Fishing, because I haven't been, and I need to be present to the day that we're out there and just enjoy it because it doesn't happen very often. So that's definitely number two. And what day is that? And what day are you leaving your laptop at, at home? Um... I'm leaving my laptop. It's coming with me on the boat to the boat. So I'm taking a ferry. I need the laptop with me, but I am leaving it in the hotel on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And then out of the last two, so getting those two workouts in or a walk with a friend, which one that do you have a friend in mind? I guess is the question yes. or, okay. Um, so which one do you think is going to mean the most to you or to them? Um, the walk. The walk. Yeah. Okay. Nice work, Morgan. <laughs> How do you fix me? It's great. I love it. So fishing is Saturday. What day is the horse? What day? Um, that needs to be today or tomorrow. My stepdad's in town today. I'm going to do tomorrow. Perfect. And then what day, so you're going to call tonight your friend yep. and, and make sure you schedule a time to walk with her or him before yep. next Tuesday. I am. I will do that tonight. I will do that as soon as this call is over. Perfect. Thank Honey, you. you're welcome. How about you? What three personal things did you put down? Well, I've actually got them already organized, but um, I'm using you. I'm, I have to, yeah, I've been busy this morning. Um, I, I'm meeting with a girlfriend, but it's actually to do a course, but it's kind of fun. I'm going to get a char, do a charcuterie board and we're going to drink wine. And so we're kind of combining the two. So that, and then um, I've got an, two other lunch dates. Actually, this week is pretty crazy because normally I don't do this that much, but I've got um, two other lunch dates with people I know through business, but we've also agreed not to make it about business. So two different days. So this is going to be a great week. Um, my exercise, that's kind of built in stone because it's, you know, it's all set up ahead of time. I've got another one that I don't know. I really need to do this for me and it's going to sound terrible, but I need to start working on organizing my basement and because oh. eventually these trees are going to have to come down and I need to make sure all the space is ready for them. So that will make me feel really good and it's just it's always weighing over me so I've decided every day I need to do a little bit to do with that and then I it's another one but just um my son and daughter and grandson make sure I get a, a, a bit of a visit anyway in with them this week okay so your first couple lunches are scheduled already your workouts are already scheduled in yeah. your um, schedule um, in your yeah. calendar what was the yeah. first thing you said uh, the first one was meeting with we, meeting with a friend. We're doing that actually um, to, tomorrow um, to go over, to do a course together. We're going to navigate this course together. Um, and so we're going to do it, but combine, you know, charcuterie and wine. And so that's kind of business, I guess. But um, I can I can count that as business. So for myself, I've got the workouts, the, the lunch with, um, two other girlfriends and a visit with my grandson and kids to make sure I see them for a little bit of time anyway. Perfect. And are you going to call them tonight and schedule a time? Do you have time this weekend or in the probably, early part of this weekend? Yeah, probably this weekend. Yeah. And yeah. something that only a few guys probably know about me, I love organizing like a lot. Um, and yeah, I like it a lot. So advice, instead of trying to do a little bit every day, pick your Sunday or your Saturday morning and just pick a small area. So if you have a closet, go down mm -hmm. and just do the closet. I'm actually doing a mm -hmm. challenge with one of my clients each month. She has to pick one room in the house to go through. 
So this month she chose her bedroom. So each she, by the end of April, has to have her bedroom completely purged and decluttered. So pick just one day to start because when we start to do that every day, we feel like it's not as fun. And if we miss the day, we feel bad that we didn't do it. Okay. Um, yeah. That's good advice. I, I will do that. Yeah. Get my calendar out now. <laughs> Perfect. And what day are you going to put that one on for, you think? Just a well, some little I think, small portion. I think I'm going to do that. Actually, um, Saturday or Sunday, we do, or no, wait a second. I'm looking at the wrong week here. Um, I could do that. Saturday or Sunday, or maybe a bit on both days, like for an extended, because I can only take so much of it anyway. So maybe I'll divide it up and do a few hours on each day just to get it done. And I'll feel a lot better just to get stuff done and just go down on the weekend. So I'm sketch. I'm writing it down right now with my erasable, oops, that's with my erasable pen. Well, I should, I shouldn't write it with an erasable pen. I'll write <laughs> it with my regular pen because then I can't erase it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, okay. And I'll be checking in on you too. So I'm going to make sure I add you as a Facebook friend, if that's okay. And I'll just okay. shoot you a Facebook message to kind of see how it went. Okay. And I love before and after photos. So if you want to take before and after photos and you're comfortable oh, no. sharing, no. we will. No, I see my face. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> you have no, when you talk about set aside a certain time to do a part of it no no I mean this basement is yeah it it's a basement that it stories are made on tv about my basement <laughs> we call that. that the unknown room <laughs> that's the unknown basement at this point <laughs> I retired from 35 years of teaching and I wasn't going to retire but something happened and I decided that's it I'm done and so within two months and so I didn't have time to get rid of all my stuff it went down the basement so I basically have and some of this stuff I, I don't want to throw out because as soon as I throw it out I need it you know <laughs> <laughs> oh I understand well perfect awesome and Cherry what are your three uh, I started writing some down and then they were more like not personal. They were like about other people. And then you said something about personal and then I started writing more down. So, oh man. Okay. Haircut. I wanted a haircut forever. So I guess I have to put it on the schedule, right? Yeah. Call and uh, make an appointment after this call. <laughs> make an appointment after this call. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm writing it down. Oh, and schedule. Yeah, okay. Um, we have a survey. I'm sorry, what was that? I was gonna say, feel free to read. If you have multiple, we can narrow them down just like I did with Jamie. So if you have some that you're kind of struggling in between, feel free to read them all. All right. So I really wanted or think that I should write a, something and send something to my dad. So I'm doing all this stuff for moms. And he's like, I'm not a mom. So I can't be a part of it. So I really want to send something to him just to let him know that I appreciate him, even though he can't be part of my group. Um, we're having, we're, we're visiting Michigan. So we moved to Missouri. We're visiting Michigan in the summer and we're having this big lunch party celebration for all of our friends and family to come to. So we didn't announce it yet, but I want to like come up with a flyer and like post it or an event or something. So that was on my list of something to do. And then my daughter's graduating from high school. Oh my goodness. And I need to finish out her like announcement cards that we need to send out and a survey at church. That was the last thing that was on my list. So what's coming first, coming to Michigan or your daughter's graduation? Graduation. Okay, so that priority comes first in time. So that should be a higher priority. Okay, that makes sense. And then your other ones were the letter to your dad and- And a um, day at church, which is happening on Saturday. It kind of already is scheduled. So- So we'll pick my dad because the other one's okay. already scheduled. Awesome. And okay. what are you doing? sit down and write the letter to your dad or send him a video or do whatever you're going to do. And then when are you going to work on your daughter's graduation announcement? I'm going to do my dad on Sunday. 
and graduation announcement. Hmm. I have to pick a day to actually do it or pick a day to have it completed. Um, pick a day, pick two, pick the day you need it completed by, and then pick the first day that you're going to start working on it okay. so that it's not the, oh, it's the last day to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, I think what was, I, I was going through in my head. I was like, oh, great. When does it have to be done by? When do I need to start it? Um, how about I'm just going to start it on Saturday. Perfect. Can I just say that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Put it on your right. calendar to make sure that okay. you do it. Um, you let her off the hook too easy. <laughs> oh, don't worry. When I follow up with her next week, I'll be like, okay, when's it due? <laughs> I'm just teasing okay. Jerry. <laughs> well, there's other things. In you have nine kids. Things. You can you do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> she has to get a QR code from someone. So I want to start it on Saturday, but I might not have it all, all the pieces in place. Okay. And then for your haircut, if you can't get it cut by next Tuesday, that's okay. Cut but it myself? Call, no, call and make <laughs> I'll YouTube it and I'll cut it myself and then I'll show you pictures of how bad it turned out. So this is getting scheduled. It's getting scheduled. So at least call and schedule the appointment. Like my massage will not yes. happen next week, but I need to call and schedule it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So takeaways, you guys all have your, pri your three priorities for this next week. What is gonna help bring you guys some joy in your personal lives and not let your work lives overrun you. You also have these added to the calendar and I'm giving you guys the opportunity for all you guys on Facebook, you also have this opportunity. And if you drop accountability in the comments or in the chat, I'm going to reach out to you individually next week and see how these tasks went. I'll first send you a message and say, okay, these were your goals. How did they go? Did you get them accomplished? What worked, what didn't work? And then we will set what the following, the next week is. And we're gonna do this for three weeks for anybody who wants the opportunity to see what it's like to have some of this hands-on. Am I doing things for myself or not? If you are not, you guys are all on Facebook. You guys are all watching on Facebook. I was gonna say, if you're not on Facebook, I can get an email, but. Facebook is where we're at. Um, so we'll do we'll go around the room, do takeaways, um, insights, takeaways, and yeah, that's about that's about where I'm at. Jamie, anything else that I needed to come up with? Or are we good with everything? Awesome. Cherry, you want to go first? Sure. Do we have to put accountability in the thing, or are you gonna follow up with us no matter what? I'm gonna follow up with you guys on this. Okay. Screen. All right, sounds good. Um, Facebook, whether you're watching the replay or now, drop accountability. <laughs> um, takeaway, start somewhere. Like mm. pick something and start it. Get it on the calendar. I guess that's my takeaway. I love it. Sheila, how about you? What is your takeaway? <clears throat> um... I need more help with prioritizing. You would think I'd have this crap down, but I don't. I mean, just, and I think it's more in work. No, it's my whole life. <laughs> and we can't do everything all at once. So you're working on prioritizing your personal life. And then we'll start, we'll get in. Because this is just one of many, Jamie and I have been talking, this is just one of a few time management trainings I'm gonna do for you guys. I, this does not all happen overnight, but think about implementing this, something simple, something that's consistent, something that can be a habit. It's not, we don't turn it on and off when we want it. It needs to be there all the time or it's not gonna be there. Yeah. Cindy, how about you? What was your takeaway and insight? Yeah, I mean, I think it's nothing new. I think it's what I've known is that I just have to follow through and force myself to really, you know, do it when it comes to like personal time. I just, I, I have to just do it, bottom line. Our businesses will survive. Yep. They will. Because if we don't put ourselves first, we can't even serve the business how we want to. Penny, how about you? 
Well, it's the same thing. It's um, just making sure like you, we make time for our personal life. And too often, if I just say, oh, I'll see the grandson and the kids sometime this week, it goes by and I'm thinking, oh, I have, you know, so I need to schedule that in as well and make sure I set up a plan that once I phone and I commit myself going for a walk with them or whatever we do, then that's set in stone. I won't renege on that sort of thing. I think I've got the lunch stuff down, the exercise. I'm only going to do it twice this week, but when I start the the week after, then I have to do it. I'll be there a lot more. So yeah, I think I think just it's important to schedule time. I think some of what I, I can resonate with what Sheila said, like some of what I do is fun. Like I love what I do. So that really isn't work for me. It's, you know, it's I'm enjoying it. I love it. So and I think we all can relate to that. We love what we do. We love, and if we don't love what we do, we wouldn't be doing it. That's why we, a lot of us left working for others is so that we could work for ourselves and love every single minute of it. But there is burnout. I've experienced it where we work and we work and we don't put in that personal time. Mm -hmm. And then we feel like we need a week off or we feel like everything we do just bogs us down. So by incorporating these small three things each week, you allow yourself the freedom of, ah, oh, I do have a personal life. Even though I love my work to death, I still have time for myself. I still have time for my family. Jamie, what's coming up for you? Bye, Cindy. What's coming up for you? And I'll let you know. Okay, so for me, uh, we have a few people chiming in in the chat. Tanya's three things are read a book, treadmill three times a day, and paint. Uh, she had a mani and a pedi and a massage and a haircut today. So that's inspiring. And also Renee echoed the no laptop. So I just want to chime in and see that you guys are here. Great to see you guys on the call as well. Um, and she said, Renee said, tell them, Morgan, tell them what to do. Um, so my insights today, I had a bunch actually, because you're walking us through a very simple process, something that we all intuitively think, I got this. I don't need help. But I love how we were all held extremely accountable right now. And I don't think some of the things on my list I would have done if you hadn't challenged me to put it on the piece of paper. So it just reinforces how important accountability is. I love that we focused on a personal. You took a shift based on what this audience wanted or was talking about. And I love that was another insight for me was being willing to pivot the training based on the needs of the group. So I thought that was awesome. Um, yeah, those are my insights. So thank you for today's training. I thought, I would love to know your takeaways also. What are your insights and takeaways? And then we're gonna wrap the call here in the next couple minutes. Awesome. So my takeaways are, when I look down at like my week of, it's, I need to do more personal of my own. Like go have lunch with a friend. My personal will very me, me. Um, so I need to, and I'm committed to myself to show that I also do this. It's not just an exercise. I teach you guys that I'm going to create three personal goals or priorities for this week to, for me to be with others or that are going to bring my heart full and not just me. Um, I loved the, my other insight is just how free you guys are to share what's actually happening. And I love how the openness you share, like, yeah, I haven't seen this friend in X, Y, and Z, or I, I do put my business first. I love the transparency that you guys always share because it's easier for me to help you more authentically when you guys are open to share more authentically. So I acknowledge you guys for that and I appreciate it. And I always love talking on the stage, you know that. <laughs> well, it was great to have you on and we are definitely gonna do this training again. I think it's super valuable to life and business. So thank you all for jumping on. Penny, special thank you to you for your first call, first official call with us. And I hope you got, good luck with your book launch, by the way. That's yes. awesome. Awesome, awesome. Keep us posted on that. And mm -hmm. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. We will catch you next Wednesday, same time, same place. We'll see you there. Bye everyone. Bye you guys.